Over the last 20 years, four technology giants have inspired more joy, connections, prosperity, and discovery than any entity in history. Along the way, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and Google have created hundreds of thousands of high-paying jobs. The four are responsible for an array of products and services that are entwined into the daily lives of billions of people. They've put a supercomputer in your pocket, are bringing the Internet into developing countries, and are mapping the Earth's landmass and oceans. The four have generated unprecedented wealth, $2.3 trillion, that via stock ownership, has helped millions of families across the planet build economic security. In sum, they make the world a better place. This is true. And this narrative is espoused, repeatedly, across thousands of media outlets and gatherings of the innovation class. Universities, conferences, congressional hearings, boardrooms. However, consider another view. The Four Horsemen Imagine A retailer that refuses to pay sales tax, treats its employees poorly, destroys hundreds of thousands of jobs, and yet is celebrated as a paragon of business innovation. A computer company that withholds information about a domestic act of terrorism from federal investigators, with the support of a fan following that views the firm similar to a religion. A social media firm that analyzes thousands of images of your children, activates your phone as a listening device, and sells this information to Fortune 500 companies. An ad platform that commands, in some markets, a 90% share of the most lucrative sector in media, yet avoids anti-competitive regulation through aggressive litigation and lobbyists. This narrative is also heard around the world, but in hushed tones. We know these companies aren't benevolent beings, yet we invite them into the most intimate areas of our lives. We willingly divulge personal updates, knowing they'll be used for profit. Our media elevate the executives running these companies to hero status, geniuses to be trusted and emulated. Our governments grant them special treatment regarding antitrust regulation, taxes, even labor laws. And investors bid their stocks up, providing near-infinite capital and firepower to attract the most talented people on the planet or crush adversaries. So, are these entities the four horsemen of God, love, sex, and consumption? Or are they the four horsemen of the apocalypse? The answer is yes to both questions. I'll just call them the four horsemen. How did these companies aggregate so much power? How can an inanimate, for-profit enterprise become so deeply ingrained in our psyche that it reshapes the rules of what a company can do and be? What does unprecedented scale and influence mean for the future of business and the global economy? Are they destined, like other business titans before them, to be eclipsed by younger, sexier rivals? Or have they become so entrenched that nobody individual, enterprise, government, or otherwise, stands a chance. State of Affairs This is where the four stand at the time of this writing. Amazon Shopping for a Porsche Panamera Turbo S or a pair of Louboutin lace pumps is fun. Shopping for toothpaste and eco-friendly diapers is not. As the online retailer of choice for most Americans and increasingly the world, Amazon eases the pain of drudgery, getting the stuff you need to survive. No great effort, no hunting, little gathering, just one clicking. Their formula? An unparalleled investment in last-mile infrastructure made possible by an irrationally generous lender. Retail investors who see the most compelling yet simple story ever told in business. Earth's biggest store. The story is coupled with execution that rivals D-Day, minus the whole courage and sacrifice to save the world part. The result is a retailer worth more than Walmart, Target, Macy's, Kroger, Nordstrom, Tiffany & Company, Coach, Williams-Sonoma, Tesco, Ikea, Carrefour, and The Gap combined.